Hello and welcome. We're happy that you have chosen to worship with us today. In today's gospel text, we hear examples of Jesus healing the sick and the broken. So we hope that worship might be healing and restorative for you so that you might engage life as a healthy child of God. Welcome. God, you create in us a new spirit, inspiring us to stretch our limits and reframe our perspectives. Lift us out of our proneness for brokenness and help us respond to our wounds with hope, the hope that comes in knowing that you've got us and won't leave us in despair. Fill us with new life and renewed passion. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today's reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, the ninth chapter. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax booth, and he said to him, Follow me, and he got up and followed him. And as he sat at dinner in the house, many tax collectors and sinners came and were sitting with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? 
But when he heard this, he said, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners. While he was saying these things to them, suddenly a leader of the synagogue came in and knelt before them, saying, My daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her and she will live. And Jesus got up and followed him with his disciples. Then suddenly a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years came behind him and touched the fringe of his cloak. For she said to herself, if I only touch his cloak, I will be made well. Jesus turned and seeing her, he said, take heart, daughter, your faith has made you well. And instantly the woman was made well. When Jesus came to the leader's house and saw the flute players and the crowd making a commotion, he said, go away, for the girl is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. But when the crowd had been put outside, he went in and took her by the hand. And the girl got up, and the report of this spread throughout the district. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace, mercy, and peace be with you. In the name of our risen Savior, Jesus the Christ. A couple weeks ago on Monday, Memorial Day, our family ran the Boulder Boulder. If you're not familiar with this event, it's the nation's largest Memorial Day celebration, probably the biggest 10K in the world. We joined about 40,000 of our closest friends on the streets of Boulder to run, walk, jog, and roll the six miles through town to Folsom Field. That race is a spectacle. There were people in banana costumes and swimming suits. There were superheroes and pirates and dinosaurs running the race with us. Some competitors used wheelchairs or prosthetics. And we saw active duty military people running with heavy rucksacks and plenty of old hippies along the way. There were American flags and pride flags. There were people of all colors, cultures, ages, and abilities. Everyone got to finish the race by running into and around Folsom Field to the cheers of a crowd of thousands of people. And when the citizens race was over, the elite runners began their race. They finished the course in literally a quarter of the time that it took me to run it. 30 minutes compared to my two hours. Although I bet they didn't stop to take a selfie with Elvis, to pet the llama, to slide on the slip and slide, or stand in line for bacon, or do any of the other fun things that were on the course. After finishing the race, everybody got a snack bag and a drink, which was exactly what I needed at the time. Overall, it was a great, albeit kind of strange day. And it left me thinking a lot about the kingdom of God and our gospel text for this morning. In our gospel reading today, within the span of just 14 verses, Jesus completely transforms the life of four very different people, an outsider, an insider, an unclean woman, and a dead girl. Talk about a strange day. The story begins when Jesus encounters Matthew, a tax collector, at work in his booth. All Jesus says to Matthew is, follow me. And apparently that's all it takes, because he gets up and he leaves his old life behind. He leaves a life of dishonesty, corruption, and collaboration with the empire. And he follows Jesus down the path of justice, generosity, and surrender. Nothing in his life will ever be the same after he chooses to follow Jesus. Next comes the leader of the synagogue. This man is part of the religious elite. He comes and kneels before Jesus, and he begs for the life of his little daughter. He puts all of his hope, all of his faith into Jesus, who is operating outside of the systems and norms that govern every part of this man's life. But he doesn't care. (coughs) Pardon me. Desperate times call for desperate measures. And his life will never be the same after he chooses to trust Jesus. The third story of transformation is the story of a woman who's been hemorrhaging for 12 years. She's probably not only sick and miserable, but she's also ritually unclean by Jewish law which means that she's an outcast in her own community. This woman knows that Jesus can heal her, so she reaches out and touches the edge of his cloak. 
Jesus turns and sees her, this invisible, untouchable woman. He says, take heart, daughter. Your faith has made you well. And her life will never be the same after she chooses to reach out to Jesus. Finally, the little girl. <coughs> she doesn't choose Jesus at all. It's Jesus that chooses her. He comes to the bedside where the little girl lies dead, and he takes her by the hand. And that's when her new life begins, a life that is completely transformed by love and mercy and the grace of God through no doing of her own, a life that would have been impossible without Jesus. This text is the story of four people, four very different kinds of people, male and female, old and young, powerful and powerless. And all of their lives are completely transformed, not because they're particularly good or worthy, but because they meet Jesus. These are remarkable stories that offer just a glimpse of what's possible when Jesus is part of our life. <clears throat> when we choose to follow, choose to trust, choose to reach out to Jesus, or when Jesus comes and claims us through no effort of our own. I wonder, how will your, your life be transformed by the crucified and risen Christ? <clears throat> Is Jesus calling you to follow, asking you to trust, inviting you back in community? or leading you to new life? <clears throat> this unlikely quartet of transformed people reflect what's possible in the kingdom of God. Their stories teach us, as the first reading did, that God shows no partiality, and the transforming power of God's love knows no bounds. The author Rachel Held Evans once said, this is what God's kingdom is like. <clears throat> A bunch of outcasts and oddballs gathered at the table, not because they are rich or worthy or good, but because they are hungry and they said yes, and there's always room for more. I guess that's why the Boulder Boulder had me thinking about the kingdom of God. We were a bunch of oddballs, bananas and grandmas and elite runners who had very little in common except where we were going. And somehow it all worked. Also, we got snacks, which helped. It's not unlike the church, if you think about it. We are outsiders and insiders. We are the unclean and even the living dead. We are male and female and non-binary. We are old and young. We are powerful and powerless. <clears throat> we are God's beloved and the body of Christ in the world. We're just a bunch of oddballs going the same direction, towards Jesus, towards love and life and transformation. And we have snacks, which always helps. Thanks be to God. Amen. Oh, divine healer, we confess that sometimes we yearn for you to wave a magic wand on our wounded lives to remove our pain, illness, and suffering. We hear the gospel story of the one seeking healing from Jesus and assume you will perform a similar miracle for all of us. If we just pray hard enough, and we do pray, open our eyes to recognize the teachings and tools you have given us with which to seek healing in the midst of our afflictions and diseases you whisper to us that wholeness requires self-care and rest you nudge us toward caregivers who can support and advise us you breathe into us energy to move and stretch and reach toward health. You place in us an urgency to seek justice so that all may enjoy adequate health, care. Renew our spirits in the midst of 
of our diseases and afflicting spirits. Transform us, O Holy One, for the health of your creation. faith and in hope, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and for all people in need. God, who envisions so much more, may your church here and across the globe bear witness to your call to live a life of love, sacrifice, and surrender. Rain down creativity in all the unexpected places and aspects of your world. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. God of all life, we have difficulties in our world, in our nation's cities, and in local communities everywhere. Help us to see how we can work towards justice and peace for those marginalized and rejected in our society. Use all humanity as instruments of healing so that all may live together in peace and opportunity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of hope and healing, sometimes our way of life does not align with your vision for humanity and all of creation. Guide nations and all those in authority to choose wisely and perform properly. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of light, eternal, may we not be tempted by the darkness of the world to think that you are gone. You are here. Love is real. We must think, see, hear, feel, and act in new ways. May we serve as conduits of love, and may we plant hope everywhere we go. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of comfort, many in our community are struggling in body, mind, or spirit. We lift up those who are alone and don't know where to turn. We lift up those who are sick, wrap them into your healing arms. We lift up those who are grieving the loss of a loved one. May they know you are with them. Through us, let all in need feel and experience your presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We invite you now to take a moment to share that peace with those in your lives. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. As God's family, we pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. At this table, God pours out God's gifts of love and grace to all people. Oddballs, grandmas, elite runners, anyone, everyone, everyone's welcome at this table. These are the snacks that help us get through the day, that remind us of who we are, and that remind us of God's love. So you are invited to eat and drink because the gifts of God are free.
Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you. You are forever in God's grace. Amen. Receive this benediction. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast that which is good. Render unto no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, abiding in the comfort of the Holy Spirit. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, rest upon you and remain with you this day and forever. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Oh